Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to look at a hypothesis test here for two proportions. Okay, so let's look at the data that we have here. We have information on males and females and whether they expect to attend grad school. All right, we want to see just if there's a general difference between genders here at a significance level of 0.01 or 1%. Okay, so let's get this thing set up. All it asks about was just, is there some sort of difference? Right? If I'm looking for a difference in the null, I have to assume there is no difference. And this will be a two-tailed test. Again, we didn't say, is the proportion of males less or the proportion of females less or something like that. Just a general difference. And we'll use a, a little bit different alpha than we're used to, be, used to use. Okay, so kind of like with means, Whoever we call group one and whoever we call group two doesn't really matter. We just got to stay consistent. Okay, so we should technically check our conditions first. Okay, so from group one, the males, the proportion, p hat, call it p hat m, 0.375. There's our p hat for females. Check our conditions and our, our female group checks out as well. So let's calculate our test statistic. Right now we know in order to get that standard error, we're going to need to calculate our pooled proportion. Our pooled proportion there, like x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2. All right, so I've got all those different pieces, and I get a p hat pooled of 0.51. Use that p hat pooled then to calculate my test statistic. All right, so plugging into my formula, we get this. All right, so my test statistic is a negative 2.59. So I can go critical value method. My alpha here is 0.01. It's two-tailed. So take alpha, divide it by 2. So that's 0 0.005. We know if we look up 0 0.005 in our table, that's 2.575. On a graph, looks something like this. Next, find our p-value. All right, so our test statistic was negative 2.59, right? But remember, we're going to have to multiply that by 2 because it's a two-tailed test. We'll find the area to the left of that test statistic, multiply by 2. All right, now, since we're using our z-table again, this is easy to find. So remember, my test statistic was negative 2.59. All right, so here's negative 2.59. Where those add up, that's 0 0.0048. Again, don't forget, it's a two-tailed test, so I take this value, multiply that by two, and it gives me my answer. The technology should agree with what we got. There, I'm doing it in Excel again. Remember to multiply by two. In graphing it here, we can find that area. Again, multiply by two, two-tailed test. All right, so our critical value method is telling us, remember, it was two-tailed plus or minus, so my rejection region is outside of 2.575. That test statistic of negative 2.59 falls just into that rejection region. Our p-value is here. It's less than alpha. So we're going to reject the null. There is statistically significant evidence here between the interest in grad school. Now again, remember, this was a two-tailed test, so we found just a general difference Right, but a two-tailed test, it doesn't tell us which way that difference is going. We can't necessarily say, yeah, females' attitudes were, were different than males. More males want to go or more females want to go. Right? Maybe we'd follow up with a left-tailed or a right-tailed test. Okay, but at this point, we do see just a general difference. Let's confirm this using Minitab. All right, so if I go to graph, or sorry, stat, and we go to basic statistics, two proportions. Okay, we don't have the actual data, summarized data. So this is asking for, for x1. All right, so my x1 was 18. My n1, 48. x2, we've got 33. And here we've got 52. All right, so for my hypothesis test here, 
by default it's going to be on two tails, zero is still our, our hypothesized difference. Okay, but something that I think is useful to do here, it says test method, estimate the proportions separately, use the pooled estimate. All right, I think the pooled estimate is the most effective, the most efficient, and, and really the best way of doing this. Because what are you assuming in the null? You're assuming that they are equal. All right, so here we go. So it looks like it actually will give us the p-value right here. So small p-value, test statistic, all that kind of stuff. All right, so there's how we do it in Minitab finds the same conclusion that we did. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.